So my name's Greg, I'm a designer and illustrator. And uh, if you're on social media, please feel free to come and connect with me um, at Phoenix Studios. I'm on Twitter, Instagram, and Behance. So please, if you've got any questions after the session, please do connect with me. Otherwise, you can also check out my website. Um, I run my blog and portfolio there, and I talk about things like how to survive in the creative industry, design tutorials, etc. So please do connect with me. Okay, so jumping straight into this. So this is my little journey so far, starting back all the way back to 2001, and, and it makes me feel really old sort of looking at this little timeline now. So I started out as a web designer, but now I specialize more in graphic design and illustration. And it's, it's kind of an interesting path because usually a lot of designers go the other way around. They start with graphic design and then they go into web design. I've kind of done it the other way around, upside down. So, so there we go. So this is a little selection of my work. Um, quite a wide variety of things over the years now. Anything from branding, illustration, web design. And over the years, I've kind of found that Variety is what keeps me really interested in the subject and what keeps me going. So this is to add a little bit of context uh, for everyone starting web design at the moment. Um, I started designing for the web back in the 90s and this is kind of what web design looked back then, which would you believe? And you had to understand how to code to make a website. You couldn't really there was no real preview or anything like that. You could kind of sort of see roughly what you were doing, but, but it wasn't very good. It really wasn't very good. I see Sue remembers that, okay? <laughs> At least I'm not the only one. And, and Flash had only kind of just been released and everyone jumped on it and were trying to make crazy animated websites. And what, what amazes me is this was, this was only 10 to 15 years ago, guys. Like, it's not that long ago, you know, you think about it. So that's how it used to be, and that's where I come from. Uh, and this is kind of how it is now, and, and it just, you know, such a contrast. You know, it's a lot nicer, and the tools that we've got now uh, are, are so much better. And while that's really, really, really awesome, you know, while that's great that we've got tools like Muse and stuff, it, I think it's just really impo important that we don't forget the kind of, like, where the web comes from and like the whole coding side of things. So I think it's really important to remember all that. Okay, so here's where I talk a little bit about some work. Um, two, two sort of case studies that kind of are a big contrast. So the first case study is what I would probably call an ideal client job. Um, I got to work with Jamie Oliver, who I actually met as well. And, you know, he's, an, he's a great guy with this absolutely awesome brand, really awesome brand, which I'm sure you'll know. And these are some of the page designs I created for Food Revolution Day, which is kind of an annual campaign, and they brought me in to create some of these designs. Here are a few icons I created for the campaign, and I wanted the icons to fit in with the designs that I'd created. Um, and there was already sort of a whole tone to the actual piece. You know, there, there was already like some branding. They were already quite clear on the kind of color schemes they wanted to use. So I was just mirroring that with my icons, trying to kind of copy that kind of style and create the rest of the layouts for the pages. So, um, so this is sort of the social and mobile aspects of the site. And as I was saying, you know, I was really lucky in terms of this. This is was all kind of set up already for me. You know, they already had like this amazing photography for me to use. I didn't have to invent this stuff. I, I could just use the photography and just make it look nice in a grid. You know, I didn't have to do a whole lot of work to make it look good. So this is what I would call an ideal sort of client job. On the reverse side of the spectrum, this is sort of a design I created for an agency. So I, I, I kind of came into this agency and they wanted everything to be redone. And that was my first task when I got there. And so the only thing they had was the logo. That's all they had. And I had to come up with everything else. I had to come up with 
the creative concept, everything, which was great because, you know, I love, I love these sorts of projects where I can just do it from scratch and it's all my own work. Um, so these are some sketches. And, and what it was is the agency had lots of different um, services and they wanted those to be represented somehow. So I said, well, why don't we represent them with sort of different colored liquids kind of dripping down the page? was kind of like a crazy idea and I never thought they would have, they would have thought that was a good idea and they kind of went with it and rolled with it which was awesome. So this is actually what the finalized design looked like for the web. Um, and it's, it, as you can see it's totally kind of very different to anything <laughs> that's kind of kind of normal I suppose. I wanted something quite different. So these are all like the little colored strands. And the idea is as you go down the page, so this is the same page, I'm just scrolling down. You kind of scroll down, these are all the kind of like different colored liquids coming down the page. And you would kind of end up here. And this is where all you could click on all the different services which were represented by these icons. So this was kind of like where I had to create a whole creative concept behind the page. You know, I wasn't given anything apart from the logo. And you'll find this sometimes that, you know, you get a brief where you have to do everything from scratch. But then again, you have sometimes a brief where you're given everything up front, like the Jamie Oliver job. You know, I was given everything pretty much. And I just had to come up with layouts. So that shows you the two kind of contrasting jobs in web design that you might receive. Now, although this is about web design and this course is about web design, I think a topic that kind of has come up a lot recently is content. And, you know, it's, it's fine to create web design, but I think I didn't realize this until later in my career is that what's just as important is what you put into the, into the web design itself. So um, I do a lot of kind of personal work and I create a lot of personal projects to put into my website. And... What that does is it, it makes sure that my content is up to date. I'm not just showing client work, I'm actually showing a lot of personal work as well. So this was a project I did in 2014, which was called Shock, Soccer Hot Shots. And the idea behind this project was to try and attract uh, some big time sponsors like Coke, Pepsi and McDonald's. And I was just trying to catch their eye to see if I could, if I could get them to work with me is what I was trying to do. Now, some of them got back to me on social media, which is which is fantastic. You know, I couldn't believe they actually replied to me, uh, and they're really positive. But you know, so far I haven't actually had any kind of client jobs from them yet. But you never know, might uh, might come in. But a few months later, what's really interesting is I actually did get contacted by someone, and that was the Rugby World Cup, and they wanted me to do a set of illustrations for the tournament. And I couldn't believe this. It's like I put out this little piece of content. And all of a sudden, they've come back to me and said, you know, somebody else, a big client's going to come to me and say, oh, can you do that for us? And it's just like, that's incredible. You know, and that's something I think students can really learn from is that don't be afraid to put some work out there. You know, don't be afraid to do something because you never know where that might lead. So they got me to do some illustrations. Uh, so this is kind of a, a quick progression from where the main um, illustration started for the player. So it started as kind of like a ticker tape kind of guy kind of bursting through this kind of imaginary wall, I suppose. And then it progressed into this um, the same guy, a bit more generic in the hoop branding, which was part of the rugby branding. And there were three in total. Um, and there were the fans, the trophy and the player in the end. And yeah, I mean... This, again, this just shows you from web to real life. So it started, I started this little web project, the soccer project online, and now I've got this client, and now everything's out in the real world. <laughs> Quite incredible to see stuff on a flag. I mean, I never thought I would ever see my design on a flag. So, you know, quite incredible that that actually happened. Inspiration and recent work. So this is kind of where I'm at now, because the rugby job was last year. So this is what really inspires me. This is this is my my real sort of like mood board of inspiration that I always kind of go back to. Anything from kind of rock music, I absolutely love sort of rock music and I love uh, neon looking stuff, glowing stuff, 80s cartoons, just really kind of colorful stuff, which is really fun. And that's kind of what I want to do is create really colorful stuff that's fun to make. So to try and attract some sort of music clients or 
just because I love music in general. Uh, the net, the recent, most recent project I've done is to create um, lots of different music graphics uh, representing each of the genres. Is what I'm, and about eighteen in total. I actually just finished the project. There are eighteen in total, and the, here's fifteen of them. So here's metal and pop, metal very fast, pop very fun and bubbly, hip hop and rock, and uh, rock is probably my fa favorite one. This is the last one I did, and I just went a bit crazy on the lightning. I, I just felt like, oh, you know, it's kind of like old school rock, and you know, everything was just really over the top. So yeah, so that explains that one. So yeah, so that's kind of like that project out of the way, and. Um, now this is a new project coming very, very soon. This is kind of a little bit of an exclusive. So this stuff is, is something I started last year and it's just a, a very big illustration project for music for myself. And I'm really looking forward to releasing it soon. And I'm hoping it's gonna be out in the next probably couple of months, I'm hoping. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that on my Twitter and check that out because that's gonna be soon on Twitter and Instagram. So a few lessons and advice very quickly. So you really need to learn the basic rules of web design, grid, typography, and layout, but then you need to break them and be creative. You know, you really need to kind of like, once you've found out how to do the basics, get out there and just try and do something creative. It's really important. And, you know, if, if I think about it, you really need to be multi-skilled to succeed. You need to be able to not only create layouts in web design, but you need to understand how best to crop a photo, how to make a set of icons, how to do a bit of illustration, you know, sometimes clients will say, oh, well, can't you just do that? You know, they won't have another designer there. So it's very important that you understand you need to be multi-skilled to be a web designer. Don't just rely on apps to code for you. I mean, yes, well, there's some fantastic apps like Muse, which you can start from, absolutely fantastic apps. But uh, I know it might seem scary, but try and go and try and code stuff as well so you understand the structure of how, what you're doing. And this is kind of my little analogy is that web design is the frame. So make sure you fill it with your own content to show people because you never know where that might lead. Thanks very much, guys. And like I say, rock on. Um, you can connect to me online at Phoenix Studios, uh, Twitter, Instagram, Behance, uh, or you can check out my website at phoenixstudios.co.uk. Thanks, guys. Thanks very much. Thanks very much, Greg. Oh, that was great. Uh, I particularly enjoyed the uh, music icons there, or the text for the music. It was very good. Um, is there any questions for Greg while he's here? Take the opportunity. I've got a couple of questions I'll throw on the side there, but I'll check our participants first. Just a lot of platitudes. That's really good. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, yeah, uh, one of the things that I find a lot of people have a problem with with web design, and you you reinforced it, which made me feel really good, is the idea that they they tend to forget their content <laughs> before they start making the page. Would that be correct in making sure you've got the content first? Well, this is it. I mean, the structure and the content is actually the main thing, and then you can kind of explore layouts and things like. That. And I think. When I was really young, I used to approach it from like, oh, I need to make a really cool, snappy, sharp-looking layout. I didn't, I, I didn't really think about what had to be put into the layout. And this is kind of back in the day when Flash was really, you know, you wanted to create a whiz-bang kind of website, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've got a few questions, well, in case other people are typing their questions in. The first one is, how much has web design changed in regards to code? So, yeah. Um, it's changed quite significantly over the years. I mean, I started with sort of table-based design, um, and that was how you did it. You know, that was the only way really you could do it was put everything into tables, which is not the right way to do it. And now everything is, you know, responsive, mobile. You can uh, create a, a site which, you know, responds very quickly to the, the device you're working on. We didn't have different devices back in the day. You know, the code was only for desktop. It was for nothing else, really. Yeah. Uh, Veronica's got a question there. Do you do a grid for all of your web designs or have you got a, f a freer ideas or do you, I guess, you sort of answered that in what you're saying there where you don't necessarily use a grid as such. Is that right? No, no. I mean, I still use a grid. I mean, 
it depends on the project. Like that project I showed um, for the agency, I started sketching because I had to come up with a creative idea. If you're just kind of doing a simple web design or web website, you can just jump straight to a grid and just start putting photography in there and stuff. But because I had no idea what I was doing with that job, I just thought, oh, I have to try and think of an idea first, get them to buy into that idea, and then I can go and actually design it you know, in Photoshop. All right. Um, I saw the really nice sketches there in the presentation um, showing your ideas, but in terms of a website, how do you tend to communicate the interactivity or the other aspects of the website to your clients? Um, I mean, it, it, it depends really what it is. So I think I always kind of try and show things like hover states as like extra extra exported graphics. So I show I I can I even sometimes do animated gifs to try and communicate how it would look, especially to a developer who wouldn't necessarily understand what I'm trying to do. Okay. Yeah. And oh, Craig's asking the participants did any of them actually sketch their wireframes on paper? Um, I've got only one more question while other people think. Uh, how much has social media changed the face of design careers? Well, that's, a, that's a fantastic question. <laughs> that's an absolutely that's a great question. Um, in, in short, it is probably the most powerful tool, I think, to, to doing anything related in, in our industry now. I think you can put out a piece of content on your social media and get noticed or snapped up by a major client i've seen many designers it happened for them i've seen designers talk with people with millions of followers uh, and just talk quite plainly and, and receive work from them so it's it's probably the most powerful tool to to get work and to kind of get yourself noticed i would say ah excellent well thank you very much that, that was a uh, very educated jason can i yes of course go greg yeah, just 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 one, Greg. In I know you're not a teacher, um, but we're kind of talking mainly to teachers, and just it, it's sort of a, it's kind of a, it's a backwards question really. If you if you were 15 now, um, but you were also in some bizarre way in some other universe uh, yourself still, what what skills would you want to be taught in school? in like this perfect school digital environment that doesn't really exist yet, um, what skills would you want us teaching you to become a successful web illustrator, digital designer? <laughs> that's a great, that's a great question. Um, and I think if I could kind of go back and, and restart and have all the tools there are today, I mean, definitely, definitely kind of, thinking about design not just for how pretty it looks but kind of like what what's the idea behind it what's the what's the you know what is there an idea behind it is there a concept behind it or is it just to look cool because I think when I started it was just to look cool and now there's kind of like a solid understanding behind what it's supposed to do what it's supposed to how it's supposed to feel and I think I, I didn't really realize that this I was playing about really um, and then the other thing I think is promotion. I think understanding that you know you need a Behance account or some other portfolio. You need to use social media frequently and consistently and constantly putting work out there. Uh, I feel like even if you're young as a student, I think you should just be putting out your experiments on social media, whatever it is, design experiments, and and, and just seeing what people say. You know, set up an Instagram account and just put one out, two or three out every week. And that just builds, it builds on your, you know, on, on momentum. It just, that's what it does. So I think, I wish I'd have been taught all these sorts of things. But then we didn't have social media back in the day. So it was quite tricky to do that. You see, I think that's a, a, a brilliant message to kind of end on. But I would love to sort of be involved in the school that, uh, you know, you go off to your maths lesson, you have a bit of PE, and then you rock up to your social media classes. Um, with people who really know what they're talking about. So uh, that, that's something we'll talk to uh, Nick Gibb about um, while he's destroying the UK curriculum. Anyway, this is an Australian uh, broadcast, so we won't worry about the UK politics. But that was awesome. Thanks, Greg. Is Jason, are you happy to shift on? 
Yeah, no, I'm all good. That's great. Thank you very much, Greg. That was uh, very enlightening. Yeah, thank you very much, guys. Thanks. That's awesome. And you're welcome to stick around if you wish. Otherwise, um, thanks from everyone.